Hi guys, this is Nia. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be painting a butterfly as a request by Mary Scott. This is the first time I've painted a butterfly with watercolor, so bear with me. I might need to do a bit more research on this because there are so many different types and I'm not really sure of the anatomy of it. But for this one, I've used a reference photo and I'll post the link in the description box. So first, I'm just going to draw it out to make it easier to paint. Firstly, I indicate the midsection on paper where I want to paint the butterfly. Then I just draw out the outline of one side of the wings first so I can draw a mirror reflection of it on the other side. I try to draw this part as accurate as I can at this point because it'll affect all the details that we're going to draw out later on. When drawing mirrored images, I try to also think about the positioning of angles and also the negative spaces to try to make those areas nice and even on both sides. Before moving on to the details, I'm going to draw out the head and the body just to indicate the placement and then I'm going to fix the angle of the wing slightly to fit the head on the body a bit better. The reason why I don't draw out the body first is because I'm prioritizing the positioning of the wings and I feel like with the head and the body covering the part of the wings, it's slightly harder to see the angles. So I prefer to see both sides of the wings touching so the angles are a bit more clear to see. As for the details, I'm going to copy the reference as much as I can. Some of them are not too visible for me so I made up some things. But the same thing goes, I like to draw one section at a time and then making a mirrored image or the copy on the other side. I try to do one section at a time because there are a lot of lines that I have to draw and even then it's already a bit difficult to keep up with which line I'm drawing so I might have missed some or added some and by doing this it's just a little bit easier to keep up with the veins. I'm also going to do the same for the bottom part of the wings and this part I feel was a bit harder to see from the reference so I might have made up a few lines but feel free to draw as you please if you're intending to paint along to this. Here are the colors that I'm going to start with. Here I have cobalt green, manganese blue, gray of gray, and cadmium orange. I want to create a very light, slightly muted teal color and for that I'm going to mix all of these colors together. I start with a large amount of cobalt green and a little bit of manganese blue. Then I'm going to add some cadmium orange to mute the color and to lighten it, I'm going to use some of the gray of gray. For the application, I want the color to be fairly diluted, so I added a lot of water and I'm just going to do a light wash on the top part of the wings, leaving the bottom part because I want to layer that on top later on. So I'll work on the top part first until it's dry. If the paint that you're applying is a little bit dark, what I like to do is continue on with just water because the paint is still wet on paper and you're able to spread that out with water to make it a little bit less concentrated. If your paint is puddling up, what I do is I dry my brush to make sure I get rid of the excess moisture and I use that dry brush to pick up any excess paint. So I just let my brush absorb the puddling areas. And I'm just going to repeat on the other side. Thank you. 
While the paint is still wet, I also like to add streaks following the veins that I drew out using a small amount of the paint that I already have. And to finish it off, I also like to add a little bit of orange near the center to add a slightly different hue to the rest of the wings. Next I'm going to introduce Ivory Black into the palette to add the details of the wings and for this I want to make sure that the base is already quite dry so the paint doesn't run. This is very important because the base color of the wings are very light so if the Ivory Black runs down and you don't take it off quick enough it might stain the rest of the wings and you might have to start over again. I'm just going to display the reference image here because it's a little bit difficult to explain the shape of where I placed the black on the wing sign. There are also the slight muted blue markings on the wings and for that I mix the ivory black into the previous mixture that I had for the base color but with a little bit more manganese blue to make it less green. And for the rest of the details with the ivory black I decided to switch to my small brush to make it easier to paint the lines. If you look at the reference image closely you will see that some parts of the black markings look slightly softer and is blending with the base color slightly so I just clean my brush and slightly dampen it to reactivate the black and pull the pigment slowly to have the paint blend with the base color. As for the sides, I tried painting irregular triangular shapes at the end of the veins and as it gets towards the top I tried to make the markings slightly closer together so the markings with the ivory black looks more dense and packed. Towards the top, I also made the black markings less triangular and I'm going to connect them with a thinner triangular tip. At this point, I'm only looking at the reference roughly and I just want to make sure I get the basic shapes of the pattern. So it might look a little bit different from the reference photo, but if you're going to also use the same reference, of course you can interpret this as you would like to. Once I'm done with the triangular lines, I'm also going to thicken the top bit because as you can see from the reference, it is a little bit thicker in that area so I just want to make the black a bit more dense. But there are also some white spaces but I wasn't too sure what the shapes are so I just made mine random shapes. I just left a little bit of negative spaces in certain areas. And for that top part and also the first black markings that I painted, I'm going to soften it using the same method before by just using a clean damp brush and I just reactivate it to slightly create a blend between the base color and the black. So next I'm going to redefine the veins on the wings and for this I'm going to create a darker muted teal color similar to the base but a bit darker so it looks nice and subtle. I like that this butterfly doesn't have too much black markings but instead subtle lines for the veins. In some parts here, I very carefully painted using my small brush to create thin delicate lines for the veins and I also added some extra lines from what I previously drew out 
but it's really up to you whether you want to follow along to this part of the painting, but I just find the extra lines make the veins look a bit more delicate. Here I decided to add some of the blue markings but at this point I was a bit confused which section of the veins or part of the wings it's supposed to be placed at so I just roughly placed it where I think would make sense on both sides of the wings. After I finish painting those markings I think I'm pretty much done with the top parts of the wings so I'm going to move on to the bottom one and I'm just going to mix the same color as before. For the bottom wings, I added a slightly darker mix and painted some lines coming from the center or coming from the body of the butterfly to create a little bit of texture or slight folds which in the end also made the veins a bit harder to see and I also darkened the areas where the two wings touch so they look slightly translucent. I'm also going to add this light orange near the body to make it cohesive with the four wings. I also added a tiny bit of white gouache to paint near the darker areas to enhance it, but you can skip this part if the part of your painting looks light enough. For the bottom wings or hind wings, I decided to start painting the blue markings first. I used the same mix as before but with a little bit of manganese blue. But looking back at the reference again here, I think that I should have added a touch of ultramarine blue because it looks more blue than teal or cyan. So you can do that but I'll just stick with the color palette that I have for this. I just painted hollow ovals which I connect following the roundness of the wings and I'm also going to do that for the right hand side. Once I'm done, I waited a little bit for the paint to settle or at least stain the paper. Then I used some tissue to absorb the rest of the paint to make the blue markings look more subtle. Then I used my small brush to define the center of the oval slightly, then move on with the veins that I drew out. This part is a little bit confusing as the lines that I drew out was blending a bit too much with the base color. So I created the lines roughly following the guide that I can see.
Lastly for the wings I'm going to add the black markings and I'm going to paint a random shape between the curvy lines that I painted before and I'm going to do that for both sides. I tried to make the markings bigger at the bottom so it looks thicker. After that I'm going to paint the triangular shapes on the other side facing the center of the butterfly but for this one I didn't really do a good job following the curvature of the wings so I added some weird shapes for the ones at the top to try to follow the curvature so if it's a little bit difficult I think you can mark it lightly with pencil first where you want to draw it out just a curvy line but very lightly so you can't really see it and then just follow that and paint on top of it. Now I'm going to paint the body and from what I've searched there are three main parts of the body of the butterfly. At the bottom is the abdomen, middle is the thorax and then the head. For the abdomen though I think from the reference photo it looks slightly hidden behind the wings so I just used a darker version of the wing color then I used straight ivory black for the thorax and the head. As for the antenna I used mostly a dry brush so I can create a really thin line without worrying about the paint puddling and transferring too fast on paper. Then to finish everything off, I want to add a very subtle shadow and for this I used a mixture of cadmium orange and ivory black because I want to create a color contrast between the wings and the shadow and I'm going to use a very thin consistency of this to paint below the butterfly so the wings look slightly lifted from the surface. And near the wings, I'm going to slightly darken the area of the shadow where it's touching, so there's a slight gradation. I'm also going to apply a little bit along the sides and also near the head and that's pretty much it for the painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully learned something new. If you decide to give this a go, please don't forget to tag me on my Instagram at ig underscore nyanyani. I'll leave all the details in the description box. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next video. Bye!